Hey there, I'm Lee Rowley, and this is Lee After Dark. Why? Because there's more to being a business leader than just business. Each week, one brave entrepreneur ejects the elevator pitch and talks about whatever they want to talk about. Today, I have with me Anita. Anita, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well, Lee. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So the rules are simple. For the next 20 minutes, we can discuss anything you want except your business. Okay. If you're successful, you'll have five minutes afterward to pitch as much as you want. But each time you slip up and talk about your business during the interview, you get a one-minute demerit. Yeah. So this is kind of a game show S sort of thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty loosey-goosey with the rules, so don't worry too much about it. Okay. Cool? All right. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let me go ahead and start the timer and go. What are we getting into for the next 20 minutes? I, I, you know what? I have a kid downstairs uh, uh, uh. who is driving me crazy wanting to get AirPods. So right before I came up here, I was like, I have an interview, just, mm -hmm. but please, mom, please. All I have to do is click add to cart and then, then I can get them. It's so simple. And I'm just like, this is not the time to have this discussion. You know what she does? She gives me the puppy dog eyes. She's oh. 10 and a half years old. She is really getting good at, you know, hitting me at those times when she knows I'm under a little bit of pressure and that I might just say yes, cause I'm busy focusing on something else. So that's what I had to deal with right before I came up and hopped on, hopped on this call. This is an unvarnished glimpse at the real life of an entrepreneur. <laughs> See, everybody thinks that we just, you know, oh, well, you don't do anything all day. Uh, yeah okay yeah, not at all no, like try that. Doing this. you will be glad to go back to your job <laughs> yeah well it's it's amazing like i think the biggest difference between like my lifestyle so lee knows this this was kind of when i when i reached out to have this conversation with mm -hmm. him you know four cats in this house three humans two hamsters and then the neighborhood puppy who thinks that our house is just an extension of hers so this place can become madness. And it's amazing how I have to juggle so many different hats throughout the day, as a lot of us do. It's just that mine are all over the place. So I might have to, you know, get up super early one morning just to get something done so that it doesn't interfere with something later. And it's very different from sort of the nine to five that I had before when the kids didn't just arrive home from school and I was already here. It was so, so different. Mm -hmm. And so the, I, the challenge of it is dealing with that, but it's also a thrill too. Like I secretly kind of like that. It's a bit chaotic. <laughs> I'll admit it. <laughs> do, you, do, do, you, do, you, do you find that you thrive more in, in, in the energy or you know, because some people do. I, I do at times, but okay. I get up um, an hour before the kids specifically to center myself every day. Because if I don't do that, I find at, like this morning, even though I did it, I don't know what was off, but the first few hours of my day were just brutal. In fact, I had my less than stellar, just not even parenting moment, just person moment that had me shouting at one of my neighbors out of just frustration of dealing with this situation for so long. And I was like, whoa, like, is this, is this what the whole day is going to be? Like, wow, that got off to it. Like, I have not like just gotten so frustrated like that. I don't, I like months. I'm not even sure how it was just like one bad, bad start. And so it's like, all right, what can I do to turn this around? I think I, I ate breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a, that's always a good start. So would you mind going a little deeper into what this, the centering process is? And I, I believe it's different yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so tell me about yours. Yeah. So um, I've tried the meditation thing. I've tried the yoga thing. Just not not a fan. And so what I do is I have a series of some people call them affirmations. They're They're more statements of aspiration, I would say, where I'd like to be. And, and there's nothing specific to, to them. So they're, they're kind of more like general statements, like things, things are getting better and better. Um, I'm starting to feel better about life. Um, you know, um, 
the, so I sort of say the highest and best people are now coming into my life, like that kind of sort of more general statements. And I have a whole series of them that I've collected over the last, you know, six months or so takes me about 20 minutes. And then the other thing I do is stretch for 20 minutes as I see fit or grab some weights. Like I, I kind of leave the the exercise slash stretching up to how I feel for that day. So I don't have anything. I'm not a really rigid person, whereas some people really like that. You know, I'm really scheduled and from here to here, I do this. And from this time to this time, that's not me, Mm -hmm. but I, I do find when I don't get up and do this, that my days tend to be brutal with the exception of today where I did get up and do that. And you know, the first little while of my day was just awful. Well, it, it, there are some days that just no matter what you do, that's I just going to happen. happen and, yep. and if you could be accepting of it and just be like, okay, look, you know, this, this is not me at my best. And that's life. <laughs> that was, you know? Oh my God. Like, standing at the bus stop, the kids got on the bus. And I just turned to her and I, like, I swear you can see fire coming out of my mouth. <laughs> it was awful. I was like, even I was surprised at, at how upset I was. Like it kind of came, came on like a freight train. I was, it was anyway. Yeah. Okay, now that we're done with that, I, I can move on. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned that you like, weren't a real big fan of meditation. Uh, and that's what, that's a topic that just keeps coming up and up uh, over and over again as I'm doing these episodes of really is, is people find that the, the rigidity or the perceived rigidity of meditating for a purpose of yeah. the, you have to sit like this and your back has to be perfectly straight and your arms, it, you know, legs crossed and there has to be this and you have to uh, for, for breath and like well, meditation is, can be really, really messy and still effective. You know, it doesn't have to be sitting and thinking on your breath or trying not to think, which doesn't work anyway because our minds are programmed to do this all day on day long. Yeah. For me, gardening is meditation. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I really think it's something that is so focused. So, you know, the the whole concept of, of sitting and focusing, that's great. For me, I, you know, my mind's all over the place for one, but I prefer to exercise as a way to do it, mm-hmm. right? I rock climb and boulder and I have to be present in what I'm doing if I don't want to get injured. So for me, that really focused attention gives me that chance then to sort of receive similar benefits to what meditation is, where I come out of it and I just feel so much better. Whatever most of the problems that I went in with have disappeared or I have a new perspective on them. And those kind of affirmational, aspirational, whatever statements that I do in the morning, they do the same thing. So Mm -hmm. I stopped getting upset with myself because I think part of the pressure, Lee, is that you're hearing so many of these really successful entrepreneurs or really successful people have a daily meditation practice. And, you know, for years I thought, well, to be successful, I have to do the same thing. And I realized I don't. And it's, it doesn't work for me. In fact, I, I get to the point I don't enjoy it. So then what's the benefit if I'm not enjoying this process? Exactly. Exactly. I, I see so many people, especially online, trying to sell all kinds of things in such a uh, systemized, templatized process. Like, this is what worked for me and it'll work for you too. And that mm-hmm. extends across making money, diets, uh, you know, health, meditation, wellness, mindfulness, everything you say. I, you know, I did it. And if you do it the exact way I did it, you'll be successful too. And that's just not true. Nope. No, it isn't. Cause we're, we're all different. And if you even look back in over your own lifetime, like I'm doing stuff now that even 10 years ago, I never thought I would be doing mm-hmm. right. Or 15 or even five. So even within our own lifespans, we, we change and certain things are great for us um, at certain times and not so great for us at other times. Like I may never learn how to meditate. Like, you know, that quiet sort of sitting and focusing on either a sound or, or making a sound or whatever the heck, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Now I am. But at one time, I really felt a lot of pressure that that was the only way to get there. And I'm grateful that I have found other ways that make me feel good and that suit my lifestyle. Um, 
I think that that's the most important thing. Awesome. Awesome. So you've got a house full of chaos and yet you found your own, uh, your own portal to calm. Yeah. That's, that's own... really cool. So, yeah, yeah. If so if somebody hasn't found that, I mean, and they're struggling, you know, in, in a similar situation, I mean, what would, what would be your advice? The, so what I've come to realize is that with anything, if it makes me feel good and genuinely good, not like, you know, me shouting at this woman, yeah, in the moment, made me feel good. But afterwards, I walked away and I felt terrible because it's sure. not, I was, I was shocked. It was like another person came out and, you know, took over. Mm. Um, not that kind of good. But if it genuinely makes me feel good, like I like doing things like this, having conversations with people, learning new things about people. That's something I really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. So when I do more of the things that really make me feel good like that, then I find it becomes easier to find other things that also make me feel good. And that's how it started. It was, I got a coach and this coach, and, and that's another thing I wouldn't do without now in my life from, and I've had all kinds of coaches, business coaches, health coaches, um, mindset coaches. They've really been great at giving me whatever I need for that period of time. And so that's where I started. And, and the one just recently we focused on, well, what makes you feel good? What do you enjoy doing? What kind of gives you energy and energizes you? Versus we all have those things where you're like, oh, you know, I would pay somebody to do this sure. if, I, if I could. And, you know, some people love to mow the lawn because it gives them that meditative, you know, time or time to think or whatever mm -hmm. it is they're doing. Other people are like, oh, my God, like, just get this off my shoulders. I never want to do it again. So I think it's finding those things. And for me, like, I was surprised that rock climbing is one of those things I really enjoy doing. And so I find myself going more and doing it. Is it typical exercise? No, but I just come from 12 months of being at a gym and I despised going. So uh, just, yeah, it's that mm -hmm. feeling. Like I would go and I would work out and I was doing everything I was supposed to do, but I, I did not enjoy it. Versus rock climbing, to me, I love it. It is hard. Mm. It is problem solving. It puts me in the moment. It's very community oriented. I, I adore it. And so, you don't think about your problems. You don't. Well, no, because you're trying to solve the problem that's currently in front of you. And at least with bouldering, there's no ropes. So you're going, you know, 30 feet up in the air. Oh, and my. if you're not focused on what yeah. you're doing. <laughs> there are consequences. There are some consequences. So yeah. you can be thinking about whatever problems you have. You are literally, and they call them problems, that you are solving that problem because it is. You're trying to figure out, well, how do I get to here? And fascinating. Awesome. I love okay. it. Okay. Uh, just so I can fully understand, what geographic area are we talking about here? You're, you're in Canada, right? I am just outside Toronto. Yeah, if just you can't hear okay. it. Did I slip in the A somewhere? Probably. <laughs> I just hey, I did. I, I talk to people from all over the world. Of they can usually pick up. Sometimes I blow it, but uh, it's okay. So outside of Toronto, I yeah, I can see that. Okay, uh, we recently did some some hiking and climbing uh, out in the uh, the desert out in Nevada and mm. Utah. So uh, that I think was where I most recently found my peace and in in, in a lot the same manner that you're talking about. It's just a little warmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do most of it indoor, but did you find oh, really? the same? Yeah. So okay. all my climbing's indoor right oh, okay. now. It's, it's um, like we're into falls. So the temperatures are dropping. It's, you could still go outside. It's just not as comfortable. Um, so now we're, we're indoor climbing, but when you were doing it, tell me, tell me a little bit about your experience. Did you find the same sort of feelings that you were, you know, really present in the moment and all of that? Absolutely. That was, that was something that I took away from it that I'm still working on some articles about, uh, that I'm going to be putting on medium. Uh, it's, it was, uh, you know, Columbus, Ohio isn't a big city. Uh, by as as far as I would say, but it's still congested enough that like, I, like everywhere you look, there's neighbors and noise, and like you hear the freeway noise, and it just but just to be able to stand out in the middle of the desert uh, on a ridge that you've spent 20 minutes climbing, and I'm not in great shape, so I was just 
like a thrill that I made it up there to begin with and be able to look out and see the entire Las Vegas strip from one end to the other, you know, as a, as a reward for, for putting in the effort. Yeah. Uh, that was fascinating. And, and just the, to, I guess to hear the silence sounds weird, but you know, it really was, it's just uh, the openness, the silence, the, the removal from the day to day, Blah, 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 was like medicine yeah yeah it sounds heavenly and it's it's kind of weird that even though so i i have this chaotic life the reason why i get up that hour early even though huh, i don't really want to most <laughs> days is for that exact reason is for that peace it's for that quiet and, you know, sometimes I let the, you know, the hamsters are running in their cages, but that's, that's different from the sort of all the other noise that you might hear of, of everybody doing their stuff around and, you know, the planes flying overhead and all like it is, you don't realize how much your body craves it until like you had that experience that you did where mm -hmm. you're kind of hearing the silence and you go, whoa, like this is, wow. I kind of like this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can be so profound in its nothingness. Yeah. It's yeah, absolutely it is. amazing. So, yeah. Um, I, I had I had a thought queued up that just completely, you know, so <laughs> the, they do that every once in a while. So, uh, carry on. We've got uh, you know, like four minutes left. So, four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Come do on. it. What can we talk about? Well, I. We, I We've covered the meditation thing pretty good. Good, uh, good, yeah. Yeah, we, we've got that. Uh, got uh, running amok. So, well, what else are you into? Uh, so, one thing that I never thought I'd be into is watching some of these. So, my kids are 10 and 12 girls. Okay. Uh, we watch, They we don't have TV, so no cable TV in my house. Um, I, actually, they've been raised without it now that I think about it. But really? a lot of okay. YouTube. And it's kind of funny. Can I, I'll share a little confession. I kind of like watching some of the stuff they're watching on YouTube. There you go. So if anybody knows Mr. Beast, um, <laughs> my 10 year old, uh, you know, after her whole AirPod thing and trying to hit, <laughs> hit add to cart on Amazon, then switch right over to some bizarre Mr. Beast. I'm not even sure what they're doing. So I kind of like watching that stuff and I'm surprised because I, I never would have done this on my own, but because my kids are interested and then mm -hmm. we get inside jokes about some of the stuff that we're watching. I, I oh, like those it. are the best. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So that's something that I'm finding I'm doing more and more is taking that time. And, and even during the day, um, you know, the, as they come home from school, one comes from home significantly earlier than the other one. And she'll be down there and sometimes I'll wander down when I'm working. And next thing I know, I've just watched some 15 minute, you know, just whatever. But sometimes those little breaks during the day um, have been wonderful and really bonding as well for, for me and the kids. Cause they're sort of surprised that, you know, their mom would want to watch this stuff with them. But like, yeah, I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I would hazard a guess that those moments make everything you else you do worth it. It does. It does. You know. It really, really does. Because there aren't many parents who, let's say, work the nine to five or they don't work from home sure. who, who can snatch those moments, right? So my neighbor's puppy was in my backyard. So she's almost four months old. She's going to be a big dog and she's fast. And so we were just chasing her around. I took five minutes, came down to grab a glass of water and saw her in the backyard with my daughter in it, you know, just running around for five minutes with her. She still doesn't quite understand how to return when she, when she gets the ball, she needs to, you know, get the fetch side of things down, but to just be able to do that. Right. And she's zipping around the garden and my daughter's chasing her and I'm laughing and I'm like, these are the moments that are absolutely magical because they're unplanned. And I'm grateful that I have the chance to, to do that, right? To take those few minutes and, and uh, just enjoy, just really enjoy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful because a lot of times when we have those, the opportunities to have those moments, we're too tired or too distracted or yeah. too stressed or whatever. Yeah. And we 
let them go by without even realizing it and you can't get those back you absolutely just yeah. cannot get those back so i'm i'm really thrilled to that you've got such a focus on you know appreciating what you have uh, and really just trying to be an inspiration to others so that's just that's fantastic yeah yeah the, it, <laughs> honestly though mr beast never would have watched it on my own <laughs> i can remember a few of those th as well they're just going wow i never thought that no. it, it happens no. you know it's 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 expanding your horizons so that's... yeah well yeah i like that i like that i, I like that uh, perspective on it thank you <laughs> absolutely well listen you have officially survived the uh lee after dark 20 minute challenge that was a, you didn't even break a sweat you, you look fabulous doing it so yeah yeah so thank you i first of all thank you for for gabbing with me i, I think we've covered oh, some good welcome. material and and second i, I gotta keep my end of the bargain here so uh, i'm gonna turn it over to you you've got up to five minutes to talk about what you do uh tell people how to get in contact with you if you've got an offer okay uh, you can do that whatever you want to do sounds fantastic so okay. i specifically work with b2b business to business um what what are called SaaS companies, so software as a service. And if you're a SaaS company, you know what you are. <laughs> if you, you have no idea what I'm talking about, think Netflix. It is where you're paying a monthly subscription for some sort of service. So um, that's what I do. And what I help them do is uh, increase their profits by keeping their customers longer. So it's just consulting. Typically, I work on a 90-day engagement and look for those big wins to help them in the industry. We call it churn. Many places call it churn. Um, so it's in reducing customer churn to increase their profits. And I'm best reached on LinkedIn, so I need a talk. And I also have a website. Um, and there's a, a churn crushing guide. So my big thing is I call myself a chief churn crusher. Yeah. So we've got the churn crushing uh, quiz, which is fast and fun. Then there's the churn crushing mini guide, which uh, you access right away. So there's no email uh, that you need to put in. But if you want the full guide that kind of gives you all the details, then I can um, email that to you. And then lastly, if you want to work with me directly, because you're wanting to increase your profits and reduce churn, then you can reach out to me there. So, and I also play around on indie hackers. So this is a great place for, for startups, uh, specifically um, for those creating apps and uh, software. Okay. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, the website, of course, anitatalk.ca. A. <laughs> I'll just say, there's not an extra A on the end of dot C A. Yeah, you That's can't comma do that. E H uh, as our <laughs> as Canadians were known for that. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's snuck in somewhere in this conversation because it tends to. Um, so I th yeah, I think that that's it. I LinkedIn's probably the best if you want to message me directly and quickly. So, awesome. um, and I'm the one with the orange shirt in the pictures. Oh, well, I kind of look like I do now just with an orange shirt. And I, I think I'm like to the side and smiling, something like that. You'll see <laughs> it in the profile. Can you do that one more time? Can you do the little pose there once again? So yes, can... to the side. Like Perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, so in the, in the show notes, we'll have all those links. Yeah. Um, you know, anything that you haven't already sent me, so we'll make sure we get it in there. Yeah. Uh, and you know, go check her out. I need to talk. Uh, you have been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thanks. Uh, I've enjoyed with. this. Like, Thank I you. I really, you know, 20 minutes, it, you said it, and I'm like, oh, that's not long enough. We could easily go an hour and keep it interesting. I think that that's the most, most exciting, exciting part about this is that there's so much outside of our businesses, but we become so myopic mm -hmm. that we forget that we also have these big lives outside of it. Yeah, that's actually why I start. One of the reasons I started this, I just got so tired of saying the same thing over yep. and over and over again. Blah blah yep. blah. I'm a copywriter. Blah blah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's just it's nice. It's just refreshing. And some of the people that I've met, all of the people I've met, have absolutely 
absolutely fantastic. So thank you again yeah, you're uh, so for welcome. coming I on. Uh, we're, we're out of time. If you found Lee After Dark more entertaining and relevant than most of the drag out there, give our hosts over at IPMNation.com some love or subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, iTunes, and wherever the heck else the show ends up. This is Lee Rowley with my friend Anita Toth. Toth, I'm sorry. I don't know why. Ah, I that's okay. I Toth. switched back Dang and it. forth too. Until next good. time, be present and be well. Take care. Bye.